Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and welcome to episode six of Reservoir Red Dogs, a Christmas special. Come here, man, what we got? Rouse yourself out of your food coma, pour yourself another glass of Bucks Fizz, and do what our family do every year, gather round the iPod for the Christmas special of Reservoir Red Dogs, even though we haven't even been going a year, and this is the first one. Here, here. That's right, instead of watching Die Hard and getting all mopey that Santa is another year away, make the most of these days off by bringing your loved ones together with a shared love of forest. If you guys have, don't have any time off, and lots of people don't these days, including us today, then tell your boss that the next hour is a write-off. Um, if you do do that, we accept no responsibility for you getting fired. Today's guest is a hero in the city of Nottingham. Born and raised here, he went on to conquer Europe during one of two spells at Forest, also playing for Manchester United in England, a regular on TV and radio. It's the legend, Gary Bertels. Oh, yeah. Little figure. Woodcock and Bert- Bertels has got it. His first ever goal for Nottingham Forest. And it had to be in the European Cup. one nothing. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Gary. How are you? Very good. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Do you enjoy this festive time of year? I absolutely love it. The tree went up on December the 1st. The yes. decorations were up. Uh, yeah, I absolutely adore Christmas. I'm so it. pleased you said that because yeah. I'm the, I'm probably the most Christmassy out of the lot of us. And I get a lot of Definitely. stick for it. Well, Ebenezer there with his, you know, looking, sat there looking like Zorro <laughs> in his bloody scarf. He's so disconcerting. I am still poorly. So yeah, disconcerting sat here watching that, believe me. I'm, I'm trying to get a performance out of you guys. I'm, I'm trying to put a bit of edge in the room. You've always done that. <laughs> You've always done that. As a, as a player at Christmas, you don't really get to experience Christmas in the same way that fans do, do you? You have to be, be very disciplined. Was it... I mean, people talk... Oh, you're <laughs> <laughs> they, they do now. They, they didn't nowadays. Discipline didn't come into it at Christmas. Uh, we just treated it exactly the same as the rest of the season. We had a drink on Christmas Day. We had a drink all, every day around Christmas. It was one of those uh, things that went around at that time. So there was no kind of... Well, not no, not no discipline, but there was no sense of actually, no curfew or anything out. like that. They, you know, the gaffer trusted the players. Uh, I think he had spies all around Nottingham just in case uh, we we went out and did things we shouldn't. And uh, yeah, we've had players from various different generations on on the show. The the guys who got to play in the seventies and early eighties really had it the best, really, in terms of what you could get away with as a player. Well, on and off the pitch. Well, there were no mobile phones or anything like that as well, so you could go out. Nobody could take pictures of you or anything like that. And, you know, you behaved yourselves. You, you drank with the fans. You went out with the fans. You went out with your mates. You were allowed to do that. And I feel sorry for players now because they haven't got that facility to be able to do that anymore. You know, everything's scrutinised. What they eat, what they drink, what they can do, what they can't do. And I always find it really baffling that because everybody's metabolism is different. What suits one person doesn't suit another yeah. person. I used to have a fry up on a Saturday morning before a game, full fry up, <laughs> you know. And I used to have a drink on a Friday oh. night. When I was at Man United, Ron Atkinson used to bring me a pint of lager to the table because he knew I liked a pint, you know, on a Friday night. And probably that, yeah, I shouldn't have said that because that's probably why the United fans will realise I didn't do particularly well up there. <laughs> I was having a pint every Friday night. Um, but in Nottingham, it, yeah, it was it was totally different. It was, uh, you know, if you tell a player, player he's tired, he'll feel tired. Yeah, yeah. You know, we used to have a fillet steak before a game. That was a pre-match meal. And the physio at Man United used to say to me, that's the worst thing you can have. It's the worst thing to digest before a game. Yeah. And I said, well, there was a spare one left. So I said, I'll have that one as well. It's possibly the only decent game I had for Manchester United. I ate two fillet steaks. And I said, well, what do you think now? He said, well, what can I say? You know, so. a, bit of, a bit of what you like does you good. That's what they say, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I think my mum used to say that. A bit of what you like does you good. Yeah, you like absolutely. budding, Matt. Am I? Well, I'm, I'm big enough. Yeah, that's what Fat I mean. enough. That's what I mean. I like it. philosophy. <laughs> and I'm bold enough as well. <laughs> But you were very young when you started playing for. I mean, you're, uh, uh, with the greatest respect to the other people in that team as well, you still look young now. And you were young then. Do I owe you, do I owe you, owe you anything? <laughs> no, yeah. not at all. No, but seriously, yeah, some, like, yeah, somebody else said that in the car. Was it you? Said it was that? me in the car. Yeah, yeah I, I was sat there great. spluttering and coughing in the back seat <laughs> okay. with you. Yeah, well, you I'm look s- great, 61. Guys. <laughs> 61. I moisturise. I moisturise every day. I really do. Do you? Oh, absolutely. What yeah. moisturiser do you use? Yeah. I can't say it on air, can I? Oh, Should yeah. You? It's uh, at the BBC, mate. We're it's free. one of those, uh, you go to Tesco, L'Oreal, it's, it's like a two, tube thing. It's uh, one orange bit and one white bit. <laughs> Beautiful. That's and the then tooth- I, hey, I think that's the toothpaste, Gaz. Here's the other one as well. <laughs> the Green Goddess. Can you remember the Green Goddess? Can, Who used yeah. to be on the, the fitness woman on... Yeah, um, I thought you meant the old fire engines. No, she... Yeah. <laughs> no, she never looked like a fire engine, <laughs> believe me. Uh, 
<laughs> she looked okay, by the way. Um, no, she said about bags under the eyes as well. Yeah, what she did every everything in the morning, she tapped her with her fingers, tapped the underneath her eyes every day because yeah. she looks brilliant. She's in her seventies and she's got no. So I do that every day yeah. as well. Yeah, tap but your tap under your eyes. Now. I mean, this is going oh, out on Boxing Day, so people are going to be sat there feeling tired and full of spuds and bristles and whatnot. Yeah. Just perk yourself up before every you go morning. to the game. Sheffield Wednesday at home today. It's not working, Matt, for you. No, I need, I need. I think I need a sledgehammer to tap these. I think me and me and girls are just yeah, punching first, first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. I tell you what, um, Gary. Heck of a turnaround <laughs> going from like being this seventies sort of all day drinking, you know, full English breakfast before kickoff, and now yeah. moisturising in L'Oreal. You, well, you have to go with the times, don't you? You, you have do, to, yeah. You, but you, it's so rare that you hear that. Well, there you go. He's a modern man. Metrosexual. Yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> I think it just means you moisturise. That's all right. That's all it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You moisturise um, and occasionally it, listen to. Classical I use music. Uh, uh, cocoa butter for the for the record. Do you? What yeah, on the face? Oh yeah, everywhere. I, I don't use any. I've got extra stuff to be careful what I put on there. But I occasionally use Vaseline on the face. Well, my my wife swears by that to, for makeup. She always uses that, you know, to take off makeup and all that. To take it, it off, and it keeps it keeps it the face young. Apparently, yes. Oh well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, there you go. So maybe the Vaseline does work. Um, so many great years at, at Forest, Gary, playing under the great Brian Clough. One thing we do ask people who've, who've played under Clough, because so many people seem to be able to, is to be able to do an impression of him. Can you do a Cloughy? Well, shouting at me for doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, young man, <laughs> hold the ball and give it to the little fat lad. <laughs> that, that was, you know, that's all you did. Get the ball, give it to Robbo, you know. But I remember when I was... In the reserves, funnily enough, um, I used to be a squash partner because he knew I, I liked squash and I was thinking of taking it up because I got turned down by Aston Villa when I was uh, 15. Um, so I had to go and play him and he cheated like hell. You know, he used to go across the front of you and you're supposed to say when that happens, would you like it again? You say, son, would you like it again? <laughs> no, yeah, for your all right. <laughs> <laughs> when I got in the first team, I said, yeah, I'll have it again, please. But when you're in the reserves. But I played him. I used to get dragged off the training pitch and I caked in mud. One of the apprentices had come down, said, you're playing squash with a gaffer at Trent Bridge at the cricket ground. So we were playing Derby reserves on that particular day at, uh, at the city ground. So he dragged me off, played uh, squash, had the Derby game at night, and I thought, you know, he's going to be soft on me because, you know, I played squash for an hour. And uh, I did one thing wrong, and you could hear it echoing around the ground. Gaz! You know, and it, I won't use the F word, but, you know, that was it. And you thought, oh, that's, that's how good he was at things. He never let you rest. He always wanted the best out of you, and he never let you slack. Because you signed from Long Eaton United. I did. At a very young age. How intimidating. I mean, Brian Clough was intimidating no matter how old you were. What was it like signing for him so young? Frightening, to say the least. Um, you would, I mean... I, I was a kid going into Nottingham on a night out once and there was a petition going round before Brian came to the club. It was round about Christmas and I was at the Palais, Palais de Dance as they called it, yeah. and it was the first revolving dance floor in the country. That's right. And, but, you know, people, it was fabulous to go there because he was drunk and you used to see him flying off there. <laughs> it, was a, it was quality. How fast did it revolve? Oh, as, as quickly as you wanted to sometimes. <laughs> Bodies flying everywhere. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, anyway, there's this paper um, petition going round. They were taking it around Nottingham, all these lads. They wanted Brian Clough to be the manager. And it was it was just as long as you could see. Thousands of signatures on it. And I actually signed it. Wow. So And then I, I got to sign for Forrest. And, uh, you know, the rest, really? they, they say, is, is history. And uh, the, my first memory, the first team were in the first team dressing room. The reserves always used to go in the away dressing room at the city ground. And I was sat... On, there was a one table in the reserve team, uh, the away dressing room, little table, and I'd sat on it. It was right next to the changing room door. And the gaffer always used to come in where the players do, you know, near the treatment room. Uh, but for once, he came the other way through where the trophy room is and popped his head around the door, saw me sat on this desk. This is my first day. Get off my table. Straight, of course, straight away, you're thinking, what's going on here? But that's just to make you realise who's the gaffer, yeah. who's in charge, and, you know, it sets you up well. I, I, I can't imagine what it was like to play for him, because you knew him as well, Paul, you know, we've talked about this many times, about how sort of multifaceted he was, really. You know, he, he could be tough, he could be a bully, but he was also very warm and generous. Hey, no, he's never a bully. 
Never a bully. No, no, no. Never a bully. Because some people, I mean, you know, he has a he has a mixed reputation with some people. I'll, I'll tell you what. People say that Kevin Keegan and uh, Mick Shannon years ago said they could never play for Brian Clough because of the fear factor. Yeah. You cannot play for somebody if you're scared to death of them when you go out on a football pitch. He relaxed you so much when you went out on a football pitch, cleared your mind of everything, and it was a delight to go in every morning. Yeah, you knew you were going to get a bollock in now and again, but that was part and parcel of it. You enjoyed it. He'd make you wait in the trophy room for a meeting for two hours, then come in and say, right, see you tomorrow. You know, things like that, but it didn't bother you. Never, ever a bully. Not in my time there. So more just uh, a sort of intense form of... Psychology and man management, I suppose. That sounds a bit better. <laughs> that sounds a bit better. <laughs> well, a, a, a better way of putting it. Um, when you're playing for Long Eaton United, I mean, you know, we all get nostalgic about football in the 70s. And even with Forest, you know, that was top division club and the pitch was a mess by November. Playing at Long Eaton United, I mean, even compared to now, what were the facilities like then as a player? They weren't particularly good, obviously. I, got, I think I was on £6 a week when I was playing for Long Eaton United. Um, the pitch was an absolute disgrace. It was, you know, it was called off more times than it not in in winter, and the dressing rooms were very small. But that's that's how it was. You know, you were getting paid for your hobby in those days. It was just fantastic. You know, to get six quid a week in those days was, was you know, quite a bit of money to to earn. And I, I I feel a little bit disappointed players now because they forget why they en- enjoyed the game in the first place, and I think they just take it t- for granted a little bit too much. And, when you're finished, Paul will tell you, you know, you regret maybe a lot of what you did in those times. And you're a long time out of the game and um, I, I don't think they treat it as it should be treated now. I totally agree. Um, when we you know, get nostalgic about old football, old-fashioned football, something that people always talk about is orange footballs during the snow and actually playing on a, on a snowy pitch. Uh, do either of you remember playing? It was the famous Tottenham game. Did you play in that one that was called off? Um, yeah, I was. Well, I was on the bench. But do you ever remember playing Gary in sort of awful wintry conditions? Absolutely. Hard pitches and... Oh, uh, the, the one that sticks out was an FA Cup game. We beat, we won three nil, and Larry Lloyd scored a, a goal from about thirty-five yards. Strode forward, snow on the ground. Uh, it's a great one, top corner. Um, the one I remember more than anything, we always used. To, well, a lot of the time we used to go to a hotel in Nottingham on a Friday night before the game. And um, we'd been training the day before and it was the really hard winter where it was minus five and six at six o'clock in the evening. Cars were frozen over, trained on the city ground on the Friday. It was concrete, absolute concrete. But the gaffer never liked to have games called off. He used to convince the referee he'd got to play them. Yeah. So I thought, no way the game's going to be on. Went to the Cadland <laughs> Friday night at about 10, 12 pints. <laughs> Played three car brag till two in the morning at my mate's house. Got up the next morning, waiting for the phone call. Phone call never came. Game was on. He'd, he'd convinced the referee to oh, play. Oh, man. We went and beat them. I think we beat them 3 0, scored a goal, got man of the match, and totally reassessed my way of thinking about playing football. You know, it's just ridiculous. So, in terms of, like, did you feel hungover during that game? No. You didn't feel sick at mind all. You, mind you, to be fair, the best round of golf I ever played in my life was in North Wales at a golf course called Neffin, more for Neffin. And we'd been out till six. Nevin. No. Oh. <laughs> more for oh, Nevin. <laughs> South Wales and North Wales. Um, <laughs> we went out and I shot 79 in the morning. Still, I had a two hour sleep. Shot 79. We played around in the afternoon. I shot 112 because I sobered up. And that's, that's the difference. I was absolutely hanging in the morning, shot 79, sobered up, shot 112. There's that little Goldilocks zone, isn't it, that you get when you're playing snooker and golf and things like that. It's two to six pints, I think. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Darts. Where you, you just, you just, you're loose, loose enough to not care, but you've still got your faculties. And you, we, Everyone should play in the Goldilocks zone, shouldn't they? Two yes. to six pints, that's where everyone should play. But uh, what I'm thinking is, it, it, you weren't playing after a few pints, you are playing like the day after a few pints. You remember the Southampton game, the final, uh, the League Cup at Wembley? We scored twice. Four times, actually, and uh, two disallowed. <laughs> not bitter, though. Not bitter, <laughs> no, at all. You don't look it. No. Um, and he took us down to London, to the, where the England team used to stay, um, the hotel where they were, and we, we got there and... He said, right, dump your cases. We're in this room, pointed to a room, straight down here. So we all dumped our cases, went down in this room. There's a big table full of sandwiches, everything, you know, sausage rolls and all the caper. 
And he said, right, anything you want to drink, whether it's cider, lager, wine, champagne, it's there for you. <sighs> so we all sat down and they start reciting stories, him and Pete, of when they started at Hartlepool. And, you know, had us in stitches, relaxing us. And we're still there about half 11, quarter 12. And I was, I was getting hammered. I was, I, I, <laughs> absolutely. And I, I actually, we walked up the stairs and I fell on all fours going up the stairs. <laughs> And uh, Archie Gemmell got up to go um, to leave about half 11. And Gaffer said, where are you? Where do you think you're going? He said, I'm just going up to have a bath, Gaffer. He said, it's, you know, what I do the night before a game. He said, sit down. You'll go when we go. So we sat down. Ten minutes later, we all went. And we were 1-0 down at half time. No wonder. Yeah. And then we came back in the second half and we won it 3-2. I'm amazed that more people didn't puke like during games. No, I don't. I mean, I can't, if I've had, a, you know... But there weren't was... so many cameras in those days, remember, so you possibly could have done and got away with got it. Got away with it. Yeah. Did you have a little spot, you know, you could sort of... <laughs> I never did. Vomit. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the corner flag. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the blind spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, it's, it's remarkable. Cause did you ever play with the hangover, Paul? Oh, yeah. yeah. But at Forest? Not at Forest, because I was a young lad, so yeah. I had to impress, and it was a different time. Um, but when I went when I went down to Plymouth, yeah. um, we had a, we had a good group down there. So it was the first time I was you know first name on the team sheet and all that, and we had a real good crew. So um, yeah, we were out Thursday night too, even though we weren't meant to, um, and a couple on the Friday. Yeah. Wow. And did you ever feel ill during a game? No, no. You get that buzz, don't you? You, you, you like when you're on a hangover the next morning. You, you can have that. Oh, I've woken up really early. You've got a, you've got that nice little. Area where you've got like two, three hours where you're still buzzing, probably still a little bit drunk. I, put, I think the key difference is you were athletes, so you were playing, you were exercising a lot compared to the average bloke. I went on a stag do a couple of years ago and got drunk and then played five aside and was sick on. <laughs> that's why I was sort of asked. I couldn't handle it, and it was just within five minutes I was blowing out my backside and was I vomited. Well, when you when, when, you, <laughs> when you're awful. very fit and you, you're doing it every day and you're an yeah. athlete, they say the adrenaline pushes it through your body quicker uh, so you get rid of it quicker when you've you're fit and well obviously we all know now that it's more difficult to do that yes um be definitely i, 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 <laughs> I could guarantee that's the case uh, but in those days it wasn't i mean i was the best trainer at the club at that particular time along with john mcgovern and i used to tick along in summer you know you used to go jogging every day not ridiculous until pre-season nearly started so i i, I love running i you know i, I thrived on it yeah. and uh, so it, it never really bothered me that that side of it that's amazing it's like just your bodies are in such good condition that you can drink and still play football and not uh, not be sick uh what were the christmas parties like at, at forest when you were there gary well uh <laughs> i i when i was a senior pro there later on um i i used to organize them and i always used to get a hypnotist which was absolutely, amazing which was fun <laughs> amazing and we always we always went to larry lloyd's pub at the time the uh, stage door when he owned that, and on Parliament Street, yeah, and he used to he used to close it, and he just was was us and everything. And we, some of the lads who got hypnotised, Gary Mills was one. He was absolutely brilliant. You saw him running down into the toilets. You thought mice were chasing him, <laughs> and then he'd come oh back up, you know, not realise what was going on, and he'd, he'd, he'd be chewing a lemon and all sorts. It was just, and I ne I never got involved. I just sat at the back. I, I sorted it and let everybody else get involved. <laughs> but it was quality, you know. <laughs> Was it the same hypnotist every year? Yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, he was very good. And what, who else would he hypnotise? Who else was susceptible? The, we, it was all right because the chief of police in Nottingham used to come as well on the on the day, so we knew we were going to be all right. So it was, uh, yeah. Brilliant. No, but the hypnotist, he was excellent. I've never seen anything like it. So Mills was susceptible to it. Was oh, Gaz was, to... yeah. A couple of the others were as well. I can't remember. But Gaz stuck out. You know, he was. He always got, to be fair to him, he, he was always up for it. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, it was it was quality. It was such a good idea for a Christmas party. Did you ever have anything like that? We had a great uh, Christmas do one year. Um, the Loaded, the you know, Loaded magazine. Yeah, they had they, they had a tour uh, around the UK, and they'd asked me and Scott Gemmell to go on, and it was on the night of our Christmas do. So we we were playing drinking golf. By the evening, we were all over the shop, and I had to go and do this <laughs> this really larry go on stage at Rock City wow. with Bez. Um, Kathy Lloyd, Scott Gemmell, um, Joe Guest. Oh my God! And yeah, and yeah, it, 
ended up like a night a night with Joe Guest and Bez was pretty, wow. was pretty cool. Wouldn't it used to be like, we called it, was it Fizz Fuzz? We used to play yeah, we fives, that. fives and threes. You used to go, right, one, two, Fizz for three, then Fuzz for five, and any denominations after that of fives and threes. And if you got it wrong, drink straight down. My God. In one. You got the classic and fuzzy duck as well. Yeah, you try to get as far down the line number wise as you possibly could. And, God, oh dear, that was <laughs> excessive, that was. I'm going to say, Gary, as well as this sort of hard drinking lifestyle you managed to maintain, you played every game of the 79 80 season. Um, I, I counted to the two seasons we won the two European Cups. I think I played all told with pre season games. The ones that Gaffer used to take us to Q8 and Abu Dhabi and all those sort of places. <laughs> I think I played 136 games in wow. two seasons. And did you ever feel oh, the second and the, niggles? The then. second season, I, the, the club doctor had to come out to my house because my body was full of blood boils all down my legs. So the, the whole body had just gone into you know shock a little bit. Blood uh, boils. Yeah, the horrible big. What like blisters? Li- on yeah, your... yeah. Oh, so what was causing that? Just vodka? Well, no, I never, no, never drank vodka. Never, never. Yeah, not the vodka. No, no, no. It was a kippers. <laughs> it was a kippers, dodgy kippers. No, uh, yeah, it was just fatigue, total and utter meltdown of your body because the pitches in those days were, as we know, were not particularly good. No. And uh, yeah, but it was great. You know, I, we, I, I wanted to play three times a week. I, I loved it. You it's know, been so exciting. Yeah, but getting, you're getting paid for your hobby, for goodness sake. Yeah. You know, how good's that? Well, I think it's fantastic. Every, well, as far as I was aware, it's every boy's dream to play football, but I think you're right. You know, and the, winning as well, guys. The attitude is nothing like it, is it? Oh, absolutely. Week in, yeah. week out. It's better than training. The gaffer used to, as you well know, used to give us two or three days off. I'll see, you know, you used to go in Monday. If you'd had a bad game, you went in on a Monday morning, you thought, oh, he's going to run us. He'd walk you up to the uh, embankment, and there used to be a kiosk there with tea and coffee, and he'd buy you a soup, a tea, or a coffee. You'd walk back and think, right, we're going down the training ground. He'd say, right, I'll see you in two days. So he'd walk you up the river, you'd have a coffee, soup or whatever, go back, get your things on, and you're off. And what a lift that gave yeah. you as a player. And you came back, when you came back, revitalised and thinking, right, you know, we could do this again and we'll get another couple of days off. Then he'd say, well, bring your passports in, we're going to Calamalore. You know, and things Great. like that. And that is psychology is absolutely brilliant. Just because something. it lifts everybody, you know, because, you, you right, we're going to Spain for four days. You know, we're, we're off for three days. You know, and that's how... You get players playing, not by shouting at them and, you know, cast, castigating them and all that sort of stuff. You do it psychology, and he was very, very good at that. I think there's, there's a misconception about Clough a lot of the times that he ruled with fear. Yeah. And as you alluded to earlier, you know, it's just this level of... Hey, that's the word of the morning so far, alluded. Alluded? Yeah. Do you like that one? Yeah. I've got plenty of those where they came from, maybe. <laughs> 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 I think I delivered it well with this husky voice. You like that one, guys, didn't you? Absolutely. Still yeah. ill, Paul. What, what are you, have you had any medicine? Go on, you, anyway, you alluded to it earlier, so carry on. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt Twice. again. That's, that's all right. Have I had any medicine? Yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah. It's just, it's not shifting. Oh, mate. People yeah. are going to be worried. This, people are going to be having their Christmas worried about your welfare. Well, let's put it into perspective. <laughs> we, we came in with him, and he, he got this mask on, like they wear in uh, Japan and China, you know, because of the smog and everything. For you? And, and no, not only that, he got a bottle of orange juice, and he was carrying a box of tissues around. I've never seen anybody <laughs> in Nottingham carry a box of tissues around. You have tissues in your pocket, but not a green box of tissues. They're in on the desk. Oh, the no, they are. I'm looking at them now. <laughs> there you are. Anyway, the Clough and the alluding and all yeah, that. Yeah, no, I was, I was just saying, you know, getting taken down to the for a, for a cup of tea and all that, we did exactly the same. And you feel like you've got someone's got your back, don't you? It's, it's not you're not getting your finger wagged at you all the time. And good to keep people on the toes. Time now for fan on the phone, where we talk to a different Forest fan about their experience following the club. And today we're going to talk to a young Forest fan called Johnny Owen. Young. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, he's put Hello. his phone voice on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Johnny, welcome to Reservoir Red Dogs. Pleasure to be here, lads. I'm really enjoying the Where show. Where are you? You sound like you've gone to the... Are you in the toilet? No, no. I've just gone up to uh, the reception bit. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should make it clear that Johnny works with producers the show, and usually he's just in the sort of gallery studio next door. This but, is all for the sake of authenticity. Authentic. There you we, go. We've gone, I've gone up to reception, so you get the... Uh, 
the same effect of me coming through the, uh, the through the phone line because this is fan on the phone. Uh, fan uh, on the phone. He, he has a straw from the bar at the top there into where he works <laughs> into a pint of lager. <laughs> <laughs> We're pulling the curtain Hamlet, back a bit though. here, aren't we? This is Wizard of Oz stuff. So Johnny, obviously, lifetime lifelong Forest fan. Uh, <laughs> do you remember your first Forest game? I do. Yeah, I came to Cardiff City and uh, we drew two all. Um, and then I came up next when Forest beat Cardiff 3-0, I think it was. And then I moved to Nottingham. And, uh, and I can remember when I got here, I said to my missus, I'm going down to watch some football. And she said to me, you don't know anybody. And I went, no, but I will get to know people. Uh, but Johnny, you obviously have developed a, a very close relationship with the club after making one of the, if not the greatest football film of all time, I believe in Miracles, which Gary obviously featured in. And it's not just the fact that it's a great story, it's the fact that it's a great story so well told. Um, and I say this on behalf of Forest fans, I know we're good friends. Genuinely, the club and all of us owe you a huge debt of gratitude. I mean, I've been with you on match days. You, people love you down here, don't they? Oh, they've been fantastic, Matt. You know, in all seriousness, um, Nottingham Forest fans, uh, you know, it's no secret that I love them. I got on fantastically well with me and, and also they've supported me. That's the big thing, you know. When that film came out, you know, Gary has become a very close personal friend. He'll tell you that, you know, people. some people said to me, you'll be lucky to sell 500 copies out of a club shop. You know, it did, it did 97,000 DVDs in the first few weeks of release. 97,000. You know, and that just goes to show that not just Forest fans support them, but football fans as well. So I have a huge um, debt of gratitude for Forest fans. They, they've been terrific to me, and, um, and, I, and I can't express my love for them enough. Obviously, it's a period you, you are now an expert on and, and filmed many, many hours with, with all the, the great players in that great side. We asked this of a lot of people. Can you do a Cluffy impression? Um, I believe it was a fraction, Don, a fraction, whether you managed England or had another go at the European Cup. That's right. Good lad. <laughs> <laughs> he did both. We got a Revy one in there as well. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, what he did with the film and put Forrest back on the map was just incredible. And uh, it, I, I work all around the country going to different press rooms and a number of press came up to me when it came out and said, what a great film that is. You know, Everton supporters, you know, Southampton supporters, every everybody said what a fantastically made film. The music was fantastic yes. for it of the time, and it, it was. It was just a, you know a stunning piece of work, and I'm not just saying that because he's on the phone. And what he did with the uh, the thing before the game now upon the screens, oh, that's amazing. I mean, a number of people who've said how fantastic that is because I go again all all over the country. And you get fed up of seeing all this action, you know, before the game of past, you know, glories and past teams. And then when you see it at the city ground, you know, right through the history of the club, it's fantastic. It's great. I've watched it online so many times, Johnny. That, that pre-match one. <laughs> Anytime I'm outside of Nottingham meeting up with friends, I'm like, have you seen what we play before kickoff? I'm always getting it up on my phone. I'm obsessed with it. I'll just tell a quick story about that. It's oh, yeah. funny. That's on a private link that I sent to just to Matt only. And I sort of said to him, look, you know, this is just for you. You can't really, you know, you can show it to people, but, you know, it's obviously for rights reasons. You can't. So anyway, about a week back, I looked at it, and it had been watched something like, about, without exaggeration, 3,000 times. <laughs> I thought, I've only sent it to Matt. How many times you watched this? And he went, I've watched it thousands of times. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Like, oh, so I've, thank you. I've woken up in the morning, and the iPad has been, like, on my chest, and I've fallen asleep watching it. Before I've gone to bed. <laughs> there sit as a sad man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, if I know I'm sad, I've sort of taken ownership. I've, I've reclaimed the S word. <laughs> I bet your house was buzzing then, isn't it? You're watching that 3,000 times. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, lad. Merry yeah, Christmas. Cheers, and I'll see you all later for a pint. <laughs> see you later for a pint. Merry Christmas, Johnny. Right. Cheers, Paul. Uh, Johnny, obviously, is a, is a Welshman. You can tell by him, by, by his accent. Uh, Even the Clough uh, impersonation was a bit of Welsh. Yeah, he's well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. obviously been holidaying in Wales. Bit of in there, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have people listen to the show from all over the world. Um, we have international fans. This is from James. He says, uh, many thanks for a great podcast from a Reds fan living in Asia. Having left the UK in 1994, one of my last live games was that amazing sunny afternoon at Peterborough in April 94. You can forget, Psycho and uh, Colin Moore scored twice, we got promoted. All the best and thanks again for some great entertainment. This one's from Keel Portry, says, Dear Paul and Matt, like most of you listeners, I've been a Forest fan since my dad took me to, uh, to the ground in 1990, age five. I now live in New York 
and still watch games regularly as part of the Nottingham Forest New York Supporters Club. Oh, I love that. There's about a dozen of us who crowd around the bar in New York that shows hey, the games. Any chance of an invite? Just like, can we get out there? Yeah. Oh, Let's my get, God. Let's go and do, the, and do the podcast, podcast in, New in New York. Oh, yes. We've no, got to do it. We've got to do it. Let's go out there. At Christmas. Out there hey, at Christmas as well. How good oh, would that be? Oh, my God. I love New York. We've got to do it. Best We've got to go. We've got to go. We've got to Home go. Alone 2. Yes! <laughs> Come on. Yes! Bagsy McCulkin. That, that's so, absolutely fantastic. We've got so much in common, Gary. Oh, dear. This is really free. My, my favourite line in Home Alone 2 is um, where Tim Curry's the receptionist in it. The, um, oh, the yeah, thing. yeah. And the dad's having a go. He goes, just what kind of morons have you got working here? And he goes, the finest in here. <laughs> 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 Do wrap up warm. It's awfully cold outside. Yeah, then she whacks him across the oh, face, doesn't she? Yeah. It's amazing. What a film. Donald Trump has a cameo in it, doesn't he? Yes, he does, yeah. In the, uh, in, the, in the lobby. Oh, my. We've got to go to New York. Hey, tell you what. I watched the film yesterday. It's a wonderful life. Yesterday, I watched it yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Because my wife and daughter think it's not very good. But what? I think it's one of the greatest films. Oh, yeah. You know, it's fa- absolutely yeah. brilliant. So I sat by myself yesterday afternoon and just watched it. It was wonderful. See, that's I a fine think, I've been watching it? Christmas films like every day. I just go on the telly and like get them on demand and just watch Scrooge, Miracle on 34th Street, Night oh, Both Christmas. of them, both of them. Yeah, yeah both oh. good in different ways. Yeah, yeah, I just love it. I watched one called Get Santa the other day. Oh, that's thought, amazing with Jim yeah, Broadbent. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. But I, I'd never seen it before it's and I thought a- I'll give it a go and it was really good. I can't believe it that really it wasn't good. bigger. Yeah. And it's got Rafe Spall in it uh, um, what's his name? Warwick Davis, and it's got the Jodie of... Whittaker. That's a Jodie Whittaker. I was it's, thinking, a, yeah. it's out of this yeah. world good. Yeah, it was good. I Stephen think you need Graham's to calm in down, it. Matthew, Stephen don't... Graham's in it. Do you rattling off all these films? I'm just sat at home listening to Nico drinking whiskey. Very <laughs> <laughs> intense Christmas you went for. <laughs> uh, well, fellas, it's been an absolute pleasure um, sharing Christmas with you both, and to see you both on Boxing Day has been a real treat. Gary, thank you so much for coming in. It's a pleasure. I really enjoy it. It's gone too quick. It's flown by. Well, you're always welcome back. I'll come back any time you back. want. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Paul, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Matthew. Gary, Merry Christmas. Thank you, and to you. And I think we're going to... Oh, yes. Here to sing us out. He was here last... How could you forget? He was here last time. Well, this is an... Ah, oh, this is such a treat. If you didn't think this had been Christmassy enough, get your ears around this. He was phenomenal a fortnight ago. He's back singing a Christmas special. It's Andy Reid. <laughs> you're going to do both parts or are you going to be oh god it was Christmas Eve babe in the drunk tank an old man said son I won't see another one and then he sang a song the red old mountain dew I turned my eyes away And I thought about you Got on a lucky one Came in at 18 to 1 I've got a feeling This year's for me and you Happy Christmas How oh, I love you baby There's gonna be good times When all our dreams come true They've got cars big as bars they got rivers of gold But the wind blows right through you It's no place for the old When I first took your hand on a cold Christmas Eve you promised me Broadway was waiting for me You were handsome and pretty, Queen of New York City When the band finished playing, the crowd out for more Sinatra was singing, and all the drunks they were swinging How we kissed on the corner, and danced round the floor And the boys from the NYPD choir were singing Go away, babe, and the bells were ringing out for Christmas Day I could have been someone Well, so could anyone You took my dreams from me When I first found you I took them with me, babe And I put them with my own I can't make it all alone I built my dreams around 
bum, you're a punk, you're an old grand junk Lying there on the drip on the bed, nearly dead You're a scumbag, you maggot, you're a cheap, lousy faggot Happy Christmas, mate, man, and God, it's the last And the boys from the yeah, end, what, Petey Quarter They're still singing, go away, babe And the bells were ringing out for Christmas Day There's gonna be good times When all our dreams come true sound like an X Factor judge, but like, you sound like, uh, you sound like you made it your own. Completely cool anyway. <laughs> <laughs>